originali. Bentornati a Lingue Originali. Questo è l'episodio del 7 gennaio 2022, il primo dell'anno nuovo. Ed è anche quello in cui completiamo il nostro breve ciclo di trasmissioni a tema natalizio. Infatti l'ultimo regalo di Marco Piovaz, che arriva per così dire postumo, dopo l'Epifania, è la seconda parte del primo capitolo di Canto di Natale, A Christmas Carol, di Charles Dickens, su Caffè Italia, la radio e il podcast dalla Roma Italiano e non solo, dove il venerdì, il sabato e la domenica alle ore 22, Marco Piovaz, Nadia Meroni e Barbara Marchand ci portano in viaggio, rispettivamente in Gran Bretagna, in Germania e in Francia. A voi, dalla voce di Marco Piovaz, la seconda parte del primo capitolo di Canto di Natale, A Christmas Carol, di Charles Dickens. There are many things from which I might have derived good, by which I have not profited, I dare say, Christmas among the rest. But I am sure I have always thought of Christmas time, when it has come round, as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time, the only time I know of in the long calendar of the year, when men and women seem by one consent to open their shut-up hearts freely, and to think of people below them as if they really were fellow travellers to the grave, and not another race of creatures bound on other journeys. And therefore, uncle, though it has never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that it has done me good, and will do me good, and I say God bless it. The clerk in the tank involuntarily applauded. Let me hear another sound from you, said Scrooge, and you'll keep your Christmas by losing your situation. You're quite a powerful speaker, sir, he added, turning to his nephew. I wonder you don't go into Parliament. Don't be angry, uncle. Come dine with us tomorrow. Scrooge said that he would see him. Yes, indeed he did. He went the whole length of the expression and said that he would see him in that extremity first. But why, cried Scrooge's nephew, why? Why did you get married? Because I fell in love. Because you fell in love, growled Scrooge, as if that were the only one thing in the world more ridiculous than a merry Christmas. Good afternoon. Nay, uncle, but you never came to see me before that happened. Why give it as a reason for not coming now? Good afternoon. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. Why cannot we be friends? Good afternoon. I am sorry with all my heart to find you so resolute. We have never had any quarrel to which I have been a party. But I have made the trial in homage to Christmas, and I'll keep my Christmas humour to the last. So a Merry Christmas, Uncle. Good afternoon. And a Happy New Year. Good afternoon. His nephew left the room without an angry word notwithstanding. The clerk, in letting Scrooge's nephew out, had let two other people in. They were portly gentlemen, pleasant to behold, and now stood with their hats off in Scrooge's office. They had books and papers in their hands and bowed to him. Scrooge and Marley's, I believe, said one of the gentlemen, referring to his list. Have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead this seven years. He died seven years ago, this very night. At this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, said the gentleman, taking up a pen, it is more than usually desirable that we should make some slight provision for the poor and the destitute, who suffer greatly at the present time. Many thousands are in want of common necessaries. Hundreds of thousands are in want of common comfort, sir. Are there no prisons? Plenty of prisons. 
but under the impression that they scarcely furnish Christian cheer of mind or body to the unoffending multitude, a few of us are endeavouring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. We choose this time because it is a time of all others when want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. What shall I put you down for? Nothing. You wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone. Since you ask me what I wish, gentlemen, that is my answer. I don't make merry myself at Christmas, and I can't afford to make idle people merry. I help to support the prisons and the workhouses. They cost enough, and those who are badly off must go there. But many can't go there, and many would rather die. If they would rather die, they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. At length, the hour of shutting up the counting house arrived, with an ill will Scrooge dismounting from his stool, tacitly admitted the fact to the expectant clerk in the tank, who instantly snuffed his candle out and put on his hat. You'll want all day tomorrow, I suppose. If quite convenient, sir. It is not convenient, and it's not fair. If I was to stop half a crown for it, you'd think yourself mightily ill-used, I'll be bound. Yes, sir. And yet you don't think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work. It's only once a year, sir. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. But I suppose you must have the whole day. Be here all the earlier next morning. The clerk promised that he would, and Scrooge walked out with a growl. The office was closed in a twinkling, and the clerk, with the long ends of his white comforter dangling below his waist, for he boasted no great coat, went down a slide at the end of a lane of boys twenty times, in honour of its being Christmas Eve, and then ran home as hard as he could pelt to play at blind man's buff. Scrooge took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern, and having read all the newspapers and beguiled the rest of the evening with his banker's book, went home to bed. He lived in chambers which had once belonged to his deceased partner, they were a gloomy suite of rooms in a lowering pile of buildings up a yard. The building was old enough now, and dreary enough, for nobody lived in it but Scrooge, the other rooms being all let out as offices. A lingua originali, Marco Piovaz ha letto per voi in lingua inglese. Lo ritroveremo su Caffè Italia la prossima settimana, venerdì, sempre alle ore 22. Ma Lingue Originali è in onda anche il sabato con Nadia Meroni, con la lettura in lingua tedesca, e la domenica con Barbara Marchand, per quella, in lingua francese. Vi ringraziamo per l'ascolto e vi diamo appuntamento a Lingue Originali fra sette giorni, sempre su Caffè Italia, la radio e il podcast dalla Roma italiano, e non solo. Lingue originali